Today we're going to be making a really simple vitamin C and hyaluronic acid serum and while I make it I'm going to be explaining a little bit about the different types of vitamin C and the easiest and safest way to make this. As usual if you want the formula that is available on Patreon along with my brand new mentoring plus tier which was by request from you. I've only got a few spaces in it. Um, basically what it is it's the mentoring but you can also get one-to-one -one chat with me on Zoom every month uh, for about 40 minutes and we can go through anything you like. That can be creating your PIF, it can be doing your labels, it can be putting something on the portal whatever you like. Um, there's currently five spaces that is available down below um, for those based in the UK and uh, yeah. So that's a little bit about that and let's get on with the making. Today I'm making a brightening vitamin C and hyaluronic acid serum. This is basically a simple effective brightening serum that aims to reduce the appearance of dark circles, even the skin's appearance and reduce the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles by encouraging collagen production. It's a specific water soluble form of vitamin C that I'm using that's used in cosmetics and provides significant skin benefits. It's enhanced when added to hyaluronic acid, which is why I've included that in this formula. You use this cosmetic vitamin C at three to 5% in cosmetics for skin lightening. If you think you may be sensitive to the ingredient, then start lower and work up to the 5%. I'm going to be using about 3% in this formula. I'm using sodium ascorbyl phosphate as it's an easy to source vitamin C. You can also get L-ascorbic acid. Now L-ascorbic acid, otherwise known as LAA, uh, and sodium ascorbyl phosphate, SAP, are both forms of vitamin C that can be used in skincare products, but they have different properties that make them better suited for different skin types. The type I'm using is most stable. LAA can be very difficult to work with and especially at a DIY level, which is why I'm using the SAP type here, because it's less likely to irritate the skin and it's also water soluble. Whereas LAA is an oil soluble vitamin C that's said to penetrate the skin easier than the one I'm using and therefore maximizes results. However, the type we're using is more shelf stable and it's also said to have a good brightening effect, which is why I'm using it here. So what you've seen me do so far is add the vitamin C, which you'll see is a white powder. It readily dissolves in water, so you just need to stir and stir until the water goes clear. After we've added it to the water, we can add some humectants. I'm using vegetable glycerin and propendiol. They're both quite similar, but propendiol is a lot lighter weight and less sticky, which is why I've used both, because to use all glycerin would make a very sticky serum. Um, but I have used some of it because of the viscosity. And then I'm adding some preservative. For that, I'm using Saligard PCG. This is because it is water soluble, it's very reliable, and it's also good for a broad pH range. Um, for this type of vitamin C, we do need a certain pH, which I'll go into a bit later. After that, I'm going to add the hyaluronic acid. I'm using the powder and you want the high molecular weight as it's the high molecular weight that will cause this to gel. Uh, low molecular weight will give a thinner serum, high molecular weight will give a thicker serum. So we're going to add this to the top because it's just a powder, it needs to hydrate. You don't need to stir it in, you can if you want to, but you can just leave it on top, cover it, and then I'd say leave it for about 24 hours until that's fully hydrated and then you'll be able to stir it in easily and complete the serum. It's the next day and you can see it's formed a clear gel on the surface and we just need to mix this in really well to incorporate it and then leave it perhaps a little bit of time just to let that hydrate into the rest of the formula and then you will have a silky smooth gel for your serum. How thick it is will depend on the hyaluronic acid that you used. Now 
We also need to adjust the pH. In terms of pH, I've seen a lot of conflicting information, um, but I think this is because of the confusion between the different vitamin C types. Whilst LAA likes a low pH, SAP prefers a pH between 6.5 and 8, usually around a 7. This is so it remains stable and active. So I'm opting to go for the 7. This also protects the serum against discoloration from the pH being too low. And then I'm going to bottle up just in any jar. Um, it doesn't have to be an amber jar for this type of vitamin C because it's actually quite light stable. So once I've done the pH adjusting, I'm going to bottle this up and it will be ready to use. Um, I'm not going to pH adjust on camera because if I did that in every video, it would take forever. So if you want to know more about pH, um, you can see the pH video that I have linked below. You'll notice lots of little bubbles from where I've been stirring it, but don't worry, once you've left that for 24 hours, those disperse and you have a beautiful smooth serum. So let's give it a test on my hand just to see how it comes out and what the viscosity is like. This is a very basic serum and it can be customised with other actives and extracts and things like that that you'd like to use. Just check the pH and compatibility with the other ingredients. For information on where I got these ingredients, the percentages, the gram weights for the batch and all of that, the formula is on Patreon like I mentioned and that's linked down below. Thank you to all of my patrons and everyone who watches my videos with a special thanks to my VIP and mentoring patrons who are listed here and I'll see you in the next one.